3 billion people cook over open fires every day. It causes problems of health and deforestation. We have a free and incredible source of energy, the sun. There is a great potential for cooking. In New York City, we met Alan from Solar Cookers International, who conducts research and advocates and supports the global solar cooking movement. At Low Tech Lab, we travel the world to find the best low tech. Inventions that are useful, sustainable and accessible to all. My name is Alan Bigelow and I'm the science director at Solar Cookers International. I'm also the main representative for Solar Cookers International at the United Nations. Research, advocacy, and supporting the capacity are the, the focal areas of Solar Cookers International. Approximately 40% of the people on our planet struggle for having energy for cooking. Ironically, <laughs> many of these areas where there are the greatest challenges for finding cooking fuel, there is an abundance of sunshine, <laughs> which is free energy that could be used for cooking food, for pasteurizing water, for drying food, for conserving uh, and adding value to, to crops. But people need to be aware of, of these solutions and access needs to be improved for for the solutions. Up until a few years ago, there was no internationally agreed upon testing method for solar cookers. Solar cooker manufacturers could say, mine is the best solar cooker in the world. And there was no standard measurement to account for that or give credibility. Now with this platform, as we test more and more cookers, we are able to give this single value, the standardized cooking power. This is the Fornelia Mini Solar Oven, and it's based on an evacuated tube. Inside here, I put some potatoes and garlic. Look at that. I think about two hours. Yeah. These were three potatoes, full-sized potatoes. And we'll just try them. Is solar cooking adapted to all forms of cooking, of cultures, of food? From my own experience, I can say yes. <laughs> solar cookers can bake, they can fry, you can boil, you can steam, you can roast. It, it often is about matching a type of solar cooker with the type of food you want to cook. Solar Cookers International has a number of um, initiatives uh, worldwide and one in Kenya in particular um, focuses on local production of a large solar oven. So it's being built in Kenya by Kenyans with material available in Kenya for use in Kenya using foods that are commonly eaten in Kenya. The manufacturing side of solar cookers is one opportunity, but another opportunity is what can you do with a solar cooker? And we are aware of a, a gentleman in uh, indoor India who makes solar tea. Uh, we're aware of uh, a woman who um, used a solar cooker to heat up an iron for uh, ironing clothes. And then uh, the food drying, solar drying opportunity. Um, th these are just some, some examples from, from today, from here. But if you can imagine taking the solar dryer concept to a farm, and at large scale, you dry the produce right there on site as it comes off the plants. It increases crop yield, adds value to the product, and if this is done with uh, entrepreneurial spirit and with some, some business sense, um, one can make a, a livelihood out of that. 
in my world, the solar cooker has become conventional. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's my preferred uh, cooking appliance, is to go straight to solar cooking. And it's become so much a part of my cooking lifestyle that if I can't solar cook, but I have to cook, and meaning I have to use the gas stove, I feel that I'm doing something wrong, that I'm, I'm doing something dirty, <laughs> that, that, that I, I'm, I have a gas leak or something. And um, that, that is something that is, it's very interesting how the more we try to use renewable energy, sustainable solutions, the more we, we realize how important they are. And that is something that is transforming our culture. On the boat, we use it daily to cook cakes, soups, cans, or dehydrated fruits and vegetables. I'll show you how to make your own solar cooker, the box type. To make it, you will need two light wooden boxes, a small one and a large one. We made them by ourselves, but you can also reuse existing boxes. One of the sides of the small box must be left open. The more space between the two boxes, the better the insulation on the performance. The smaller box must not be too deep, otherwise the volume to be heated would be too large. Make it just a little larger than the pots you want to put inside. An insulating material that stands a temperature of 100 degrees. We chose cardboard and mushroom mycelium we grow ourselves as it's eco-friendly and has great insulating properties. Two pieces of glass sized to perfectly fit the larger box. Some paint and varnish, some putty, screws and flat angle brackets. For the reflector, some plywood, string, hinges and a reflective material. We chose mylar, but you can use tin foil which is cheaper. The sunlight passes through the oven's double glassing and strikes the interior of the box which is matte black. The sun rays are transformed into heat. Thanks to its insulation, the oven retains the heat inside and gets hotter and hotter. Let's make the opening of your oven. The double glazing will take 2 cm from the top of the larger box. Draw a line. The smaller box will be set in place under the double glazing and its open side set on the side of the larger one. Here, the pot will be put in the oven. Draw the position of the inside box and cut out the opening. Attach the brackets that will set the inside box in place. Place the insulating material at the bottom of the large box up to the opening. Screw the inside box into place. Fill the gap between the edges. If you use polystyrene, put a layer of cardboard around so it does not melt. The glass must be placed so it is perfectly airtight and slightly pressed into the insulating material. You can put some putty on the edges of the box to seal it. The insulation is critical for it to work. Place a layer of insulating material between the two glasses. Let the mushroom expert do the next step. Be more aware of disinfecting hands and materials whenever you use mushrooms material to avoid contaminations. We use hemp straw that has been colonized by mycelium, so it will occupy the whole space perfectly. Place enough substrate to fill all the space. Press it gently, but not too much. Cover with a sterile glass. After a few days, when it's completely white, the oven is ready to be heated. Make an insulated door. An assembly of cardboard and fabric should work well. Cut out some thin plywood to make the cover on reflector. Glue some reflective material on the surface. Attach the hinges and strings so that you can adjust the angle. On a sunny day, it should reach about 100 or 120 degrees. As the cooking will take longer than with an electric oven, prepare your dish in the morning, place it in the solar oven 
and forget about it. Don't worry, the cooker will never burn your food. By noon, you will enjoy a solar meal. And it's delicious. Try to use dark pots to cook. They will heat easier. To collect maximum sun, you can adjust the position of the solar cooker every hour. Try not to open it during the cooking to keep the maximum heat inside. Adjust the reflector according to the position of the sun. In the countries located north or south of the tropics, the solar ovens often have angled glass because the sun is lower in the sky. If you leave the door open, you can dehydrate fruits and vegetables. It can also be used as an insulating box. Insert a dish you want to stay warm. Or on the contrary, use it like a cooler. Close the cover and food will stay cold for several hours. There are different types of solar cookers for different applications. The solar concentrator is foldable and reaches a high temperature. You can use it to bake bread. This solar vacuum tube can reach an even higher temperature, but you cannot make it yourself. Or this one, which is ideal for making can or sterilizing substrate for growing mushrooms. Solar energy has so many potential applications that we need to explore. In gastronomy, for example, it opens a whole new field of possibilities and experimentations. With some serious research and development on the subject, we could purify water, heat our homes, and create a new local economy without harming the environment. Let's go solar! The goal of the Lotech Lab is to find Lotech innovation, document and promote them, so that anyone can replicate them. It's open source and collaborative, so feel free to comment, and if you make it, share it with us.